In today's video, we're going to talk about Selenium Grid. So Selenium Grid is a powerful tool for running Selenium tests in parallel on multiple browsers and operating systems. It is part of Selenium Suite and is designed to enable efficient and scalable testing of web applications across different environments. Here are some key features and aspects of Selenium Grid. The first is that it allows parallel testing. So Selenium Grid allows you to distribute test cases across multiple machines, which we call nodes, and run them in parallel. This significantly reduces the time it takes to execute a suite of tests, making test automation more efficient. Selenium Grid also allows for cross-browser testing. So with Selenium Grid, you can perform cross-browser testing by configuring different nodes to run tests on various web browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Internet Explorer. This ensures that your web application works correctly across different browser environments. Selenium Grid also has cross-platform testing. Selenium Grid allows you to perform cross-platform testing by configuring nodes on different operating systems such as Windows, Mac, and Linux, and this helps identify platform-specific issues and ensures compatibility with various operating systems. Also, we gotta talk about the scalability. Selenium Grid is highly scalable. You can add or remove nodes dynamically as needed to accommodate changes in testing requirements or to handle increased testing loads. This scalability makes it suitable for small and large test suites. Also configuration, nodes in Selenium Grid are configured with desired browser and platform settings. This configuration can be customized to match the specific testing needs of your application. There's also remote web driver. Selenium Grid uses the remote web driver API, which allows test scripts to interact with browser instances running on remote machines. There's also load balancing. The hub can distribute test cases to nodes in balanced ways, uh, ensuring that the testing workload is evenly distributed among available resources. There's also the hub and node registration. Nodes need to be registered with the hub to make themselves available for test execution. This registration process involves specifying the node's capabilities, such as the browser type, version, and platform. So those were some features of Selenium Grid. Here we're going to talk about the hub and node architecture. Selenium Grid consists of two main components, the hub and nodes. The hub is a central server that manages test distribution to different nodes. Nodes are individual machines that execute the Selenium test, and this is what allows parallelization. Test scripts communicate with the hub, which then directs them to the appropriate node based on the desired browser and platform configuration. For more details on this hub node architecture, you can visit this website right here. And you see, these are the nubs. Uh, these are the nodes with the different browser specifications. You have a router which receives all the user requests, session maps which map all the session, and the distributor which maps out to the nodes itself. And yeah, so this is a very complicated process, um, but to simplify it, we're just gonna think of it as a hub and nodes. The hub is what all of these are, which basically um, says, oh, to this node, you do this, to the other node, you perform this, and basically distributes the tasks to all the nodes. In our video today, we're using Selenium Server, uh, and we're using this file right here. So on this GitHub, we go all the way down right here, 4.22.jar. Uh, .jar. So that's what we're using. So to run Selenium Grid in our project today, uh, this is what we'll be doing. So the first thing what we're going to be doing, we're just going to be specifying the web driver uh, remote right here in our uh, own code. So we're going to be using localhost 444 to host our uh, uh, web driver. And then there's various different ways we're going to run our test today. The first one is using standalone, and standalone is basically just the computer itself. And then the second is using the hub and node structure. And we'll be using these commands to perform the hub and node structures. Um, and this one, uh, we'll go through these later, and you'll see how it works. And then we'll also be using uh, pip install pipe test, uh, xdist. And this package basically allows us to run the test in parallel. So yeah, so now I'm going to show you how to implement it into your own project. So right here, I have a project open. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new uh, file uh, folder. 
and in this folder basically we'll be storing all the different uh, all the different stuff so uh, let me begin first so this is what we have from previous so I'm gonna go under the test folder right here so I'm gonna create a new folder new directory and I'm gonna name it grid and in this folder I'm actually going to uh, copy and paste three different tests um, so give me one second um, I'm gonna go ahead and paste uh, three different packages or three different uh, files into this folder. So I pasted three, uh, these three different folders, uh, files. Uh, Chrome, Edge, and Firefox is the main difference between these files. So I'm gonna close all these other ones real quick. And I'm gonna open up the Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. So the only difference between these three is the browser it uses. So in Firefox, uh, we know that it will use Firefox. In Edge, it will use the Edge browser. And in Chrome, it will use the Chrome browser. And in all three of these, what we have is one is we have uh, these different tests inside of it. So we have three different tests inside of them. And um, we have um, in the first test, uh, we're basically, um, we're going to this website right here. And then we're, we're grabbing the title of the website and we're asserting whether the title of the website is equal to this. In the second test, we're basically going to one of the forms on this website. We're filling out the form and then we're basically submitting the form and then accepting the alert. And in the third one, we're um, basically we're searching on our website uh, at this URL and we're using the search function. We're searching for each of these golf courses uh, and then, yeah. So those are the three different functions that we're uh, performing with these tests. And it's the same in all three different uh, files. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can use standalone to run these different tests. So first thing you have to do is you have to open a terminal. So I'm gonna close all these previous different terminals or command prompts if you're on Windows. And I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to paste in the following, uh, the following code, uh, the following text. So Java dash jar server uh, dash jar standalone. Go ahead, press enter, and it'll basically create a standalone and it'll create it at the port 4444 right here. So if I go ahead and go into my uh, browser right here, I can run this now and this will use a standalone. And how can I uh, view what I'm running? Well, what you can do, uh, use a different browser is, um, I'll go to localhost 4444 and we see that we can see our current session right here. And um, uh, it basically shows our current session in here. And um, we see that for, for here, it's not that descriptive, but if I run another test, for example, this one submit form, I can open this up again. And we see that there's two sessions open up sessions, we see that two different sessions that were run. So this was the previous one, and this is the session right now. Now, that's using standalone. For example, we can see, uh, let's run all of these, for example. So we're using Firefox right here, but let's say we wanted to use Chrome. Uh, let's run the first test. So this is seeing if the title is, um, is the right title of the page and seeing if the URL is the right URL. So go ahead and run this. I'll uh, drag this window over. This is what we have. It'll maximize um, and it'll basically run. And then, um, so it said that the test passed. And if I go back to my standalone or go back to my local host, we see that this Chrome session that we just ran, uh, it ran. Uh, go ahead, I can go ahead and close this Chrome window now. And uh, I'll run the second test as well. So go ahead and run the second test. Drag this over, maximize it. It'll basically fill out the form and submit it. And accepts the alert. And we see that the test passed. Now moving on to the third test. This one will be searching for a golf course. Go ahead and run this. 
try to go over maximize it. And we should see it search for different golf courses right here. So it goes Tiger Golf, opens another window over here. I'll search another one. And it just keeps an opening windows on my other window. I'm just dragging them over and keep searching these. And again, close all these. All three tests have passed right here. Um, and if I go back to right here, I see that we ran all three of these different tests right here. And so that's using standalone. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to close the standalone session. And we're going to use the hub and node structure. So in order to do that, let's uh, do a few things. The first is we'll specify the hub using this command. Um, and then we have that. Uh, so it's already in use. That's what it says. We got an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart our terminal. Uh, sometimes you come into this issue. Um, I find that if you just restart your command prompt, it solves it. So go ahead and paste this over again. And this time it's running. So now um, if I want to specify more nodes, what I have to do is actually have to open another uh, more command prompt windows. So I'll go ahead and open more. So right here, actually I will uh, close this one, but just open a new tab right here. In this one, I'll specify a node. And this node uh, defaults to port 5555. And then I'm going to actually specify another node. But this time, I'll use port 6666. Now, if I go back to my session right here, uh, port six 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 six. I have port five 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 five, and then this is the hub four 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 four. Um, I'll uh, go to here, and reset, run this. Um, and so I have this right here, and now I'm actually going to go to my uh, my project right here, and I'm going to run a few things first. The first is I'm going to go into my terminal, and I'm going to install the package. Uh, I'm going to use pip install the following package. So I'm going to use pip install pytest, uh, and I already have it installed, so, uh, so it says it's already installed. And now what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go to our directory. So go to our test directory, and then the grid directory containing all of our different tests right here. And the reason I put them all in the same directory is because um, when we run PyTest in parallel, they'll basically look at everything in the directory and it'll run everything in there. And so because we only want to run these three different uh, files, I had them in their own folder. So now what I can do is I can run PyTest-n5, and it will run everything in here in parallel. So it's running everything in parallel. And as you can see down here, it's opening up a bunch of windows on my other window right here. Um, but I'm not going to open all and drag them all over. But what I'm actually going to show you is I'm going to show you um, this right here. Um, so if I go to our session right here, we see now that it's actually ran a bunch of different tests now. So the time right now is uh, 14, 13, uh, 7, 13. And we see that all these different tests, they were just run right now. Um, and we see that it's running all the different uh, Chrome, all the different Edge, on all the different Firefox, different tests as well. Um, and it's just running them all in parallel. And this is why we have um, our PyTest in a separate uh, folder under grid. And so that's how you can use your, um, that's how you can use the hub and node structure to run these in parallel. Um, if you found this demonstration helpful, please give this video a like, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.